I think that's really been the story this whole time is that it is just your tech companies and just basically seven companies that have been leading this rally upwards. But you're finally starting to see the rally broaden out which is much more indicative of a sign that the momentum can continue rather than just seven stocks dragging up the market. So if those seven start to lag, I would not be concerned about it. Um, but I, I also wouldn't be surprised. I think that the bar was just set too high, unfortunately. All right. So with that in mind, we're going to get a, a sense of how you see this upcoming trade, trading day ahead. What is your WEX word of the day? Yes, my word of the day today was euphoria because we're now eight straight days where the markets have been higher, which is the highest it's been in about four years. I'm sorry, the longest stretch that it's been in about four years. And I was actually looking at our last couple words of the day that I used for you, and we went from FOMO or fear of missing out to optimism to now euphoria because the markets have just continued to defy the odds and climb higher despite a lot of the negativity that's out there. We do think it still has momentum to continue to run here because keep in mind, a lot of the markets are not back to their all time highs yet. And so there are still a lot of room to run here. Um, it's not too late to get into the market, but make sure you stay invested here. So one of the things we're looking at this week is obviously bank earnings, the big banks and the regional banks. Are you looking at the bank earnings? Is it giving you any insight into the economy and then also the markets? It is actually, I think the biggest thing it gives us an insight into as well is the consumer. And we've seen the consumer balance sheets based on what the banks have been saying are continuing to remain healthy, which is a really strong sign because consumer spending is about 70% of GDP. And if the consumer continues to spend, that is a good thing for the overall economy. So even though a lot of the excess savings that has been saved up during COVID is starting to get spent down, so to put it in perspective, it's about $3 trillion saved during the pandemic. It's likely expected it's down to about half a trillion dollars at this point. But people are really not worried about their job security in the future or getting wages in the future that they are continuing to spend. And you're seeing that when it comes to the bank earnings. So I actually said okay. that is a really positive sign as you look forward, the economy can continue going. You know, you said a really key word there, if consumers continue to spend. Obviously, the Fed's objective with these rate hikes is to slow down spending. And also, while people continue to spend it. I think the consensus is they're pretty stretched. We're seeing really high credit card rates. We're seeing higher debt rates. So how long do you think that can continue to power this market? Well, we need inflation to come down, right? I mean, I think ultimately that's really what the Fed is trying to do. I think one way of doing that is to get consumers to spend less. But if inflation does come down and we are able to, to get through that period where consumers can still spend, okay. that's what that soft landing scenario would be, which actually looks like it could be lining up here. You are starting to see inflation coming down. So 6.1% lower than it was 12 months ago. So Fair. we're seeing this really significant drop here. Right, so that's, on. I think, the bigger key is inflation coming down. All right, I want to jump in. We want to get your picks for the day. This is all about today. What would you put money into today and why? Um, a couple areas, but I would say the biggest one we've been looking at is international. You're continuing to see the dollar weakening here, and especially when you look at Europe, you're starting to see some optimism that inflation actually may be coming down there faster than it had previously been expected. And I think Europe might be a really good opportunity to take a look at. All right. Any uh, specific areas of international markets that you want to focus on? Um, actually, I would go with the broad index if, if you're investing there. Um, you know, we can take a look at certain PISPs. But yeah, I think some of your ETFs would actually be the way to go.